Welcome to another episode of The Bonfire. I'm your host today, Betsy Mikesell, and we have a really great crew. Dun, 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 my family. <laughs> so, introducing my husband, Gentry Mikesell, and two of my three kids. We've got Boston and Brock. Brock. So, a little bit about us. We actually have a family YouTube channel, The Mikesell Family, and then my twin boys have a channel, Brock and Boston, and my daughter, who's not here, also has a channel, so we've, we've done social media for a little while. Um, I do, I don't know if anyone's heard of this, it's called Betty's, but it's zippered bedding, and that's been really fun. Um, I've gotten them to help with some of the videos for our content, and um, we, that, that's us. That's, this is the Mike Sell family. So this next clip that you're going to be watching is um, a video from August of 2020 when we were actually in a plane crash, the four of us with two of our friends. And it was actually really powerful um, to, to witness the miracles that happened that day and to hear it from other people's point of view as well. So I want, just watch this. It, it's actually really good. This was where we were playing when we saw the plane crash. I remember heading over there, not sure where they were or what I was going to find. As I came over the sand hill with the plane in view, a few people crowding its doors and others huddled on the ground nearby, I prayed. I prayed for them and I prayed for angels to be with them. And in the moment of that thought, as though an overwhelming reassurance, I felt a flood of peace. I knew that angels were there. While Jake and his brothers helped pull the men from the plane as it was leaking fuel, I offered what comfort I could to the three on the ground. As time went on, more people came to help. So many people. And I marveled at it all. How they all survived. How there were so many miracles. They had just flown over the Uinta Mountains, and somehow they landed here, close to help. Their engine cut out while they were over the lake. Twelve seconds separated them from the ground, but peace held back their panic as the pilot skillfully weighed his options and prepared for crash landing. Had the engine trouble set in just 45 seconds before, they believed they wouldn't have made it. Running with some of the first onto the scene were campers preparing to check out, an EMT and a paramedic. They arrived just when they were needed. They knew what to do and directed the others. Their arrival wasn't coincidence. As I sat in the dry field with some of the passengers and others, I marveled, gratefully, that in its crashing and leaking, in the heat of the day, the plane and the field didn't catch fire. The stories of us all will someday run together to witness of all the miracles. But for now, I can witness, I felt heaven there that day. The side of the crash felt like sacred ground. I felt it so profoundly. As the paramedics arrived and cared for the injured, I walked by one of the men, quiet and still, his face and legs covered in bandages and support. All I could do was pray. I prayed over him and I prayed over the others. And again, in powerful reassurance, I felt a flood of peace, an overwhelming love, it stayed with me while I was there, grounding me in the assurance that God was with them. Heaven's help was there. Um, August 7th, 2020 was the day that I felt like my world was completely flipped upside down. I felt like life was good um, up to that point. Things, there were always hard times, but nothing felt too hard, you know. Um, 
so that day we had gone to Roosevelt to go visit some of our friends and um, we got down there it was a beautiful day and they're like we should go up in the plane and they have a small plane and our friends the pilot and they're like it'll be fun we were actually supposed to go boating <laughs> but they talked me into to going in a plane and that's something that I we're scared of everything we are we're scared of everything but we decided you know what let's do it like we don't get this opportunity very often but we're just going to do it yeah and I also want to note too a lot of times people are like oh if you did you have a bad feeling like was there a bad feeling and neither neither of us had a bad a bad feeling like we were nervous you know we joked about going on a plane and um but neither of us felt that bad feeling no wouldn't you agree yeah uh, yeah we, we were, were we were ready to go we're like let's do this <laughs> First time in a small plane, so. So we got over to the airport, and um, Jaslyn is my, Shad and Jaslyn, so Shad's the pilot, Jaslyn's my best friend, or one of my best friends, and um, she always sat up front, and for some reason that day, Shad's like, Jaslyn, getting back with Betsy, Gentry's going to be my co-pilot today. So Gentry sat up front with Shad, and then me and Jaslyn in the middle, and then Brock and Boston were in the back seats. Um, so we, we get up in the air and as we're, as we're flying, we're just taking video of everything and it was actually beautiful. Yeah. Like we were having a good time. Yeah. I have videos and stuff like, yeah. yeah. And I'm, and I'm posting on Instagram. I'm like, look, you can see our shadow. That's Tell us. Them what you posted on Instagram. Well, before, before we got <laughs> on the plane, I'm like, should I go on this plane ride? And everyone, 75% voted yes. And to this day, I get DMs from people who are like, I voted yes, and I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have said to get on the plane. And the thing is, is this is what I think in life too, is like, you're meant to go through these trials. Like, I, 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 that's just how I look at it. So I'm not upset about the plane crash. I'm not, I'm, we're just still trying to figure out what we need to learn from all of this. Um, so anyways, we're, we're actually having a good time up in the air. And we're coming up to Moon Lake, um, and all of a sudden, Shad, he's like, uh, we're going to have to land. I just lost power. And, and Jaslyn, from sitting behind him, leans forward, and she smacks him. She's like, Shad, knock it off. And she thought he was teasing us because Gentry and I were so nervous to get on the plane in the first place. And he's like, I'm being serious. He's like, we're going to have to land. So we had about 12 seconds, and the only reason I know this is because Gentry had been recording the whole time, and so we, we could kind of see our timeline looking back at video. And um, the crazy thing is, is you were still recording. Yeah, and I don't know what I was thinking recording. Like, most people, if they're going to go down, they're going to put the phone away. But I was so, it was, it was such a weird experience because, like, there was, like, a sense of, like, like our, my personality is to be screaming and panicking and there was a little sense of calm mm -hmm. that kind of came over well, us you can, a little bit. You can hear the audio where Gentry's like, everything's going to be okay. Just relax, relax. And and I feel like that wasn't me talking because <laughs> that is not who I am. So I just remember closing my eyes and grabbing the seat rest in front of me. And then I remember hearing Boston saying a prayer and Jaslyn started saying a prayer and that's embarrassing. Like I should have been the one thinking to do that, but sometimes your kids have to be the ones that are, are better <laughs> at that kind of a thing. Um, anyways, we ended up making it about eight miles across the lake and, uh, Shad was planning on just landing on the beach right there. And he said, this is after the plane crash, you know, and talking to him later, but he said it was as if something slapped me in the face and said, if you land on the, the beach, you're going to flip and, and the kids will die meaning Brock and Boston. And so he ended up crashing just above that or landing just above that. And we didn't flip. We, we landed in brush and I don't know how the plane didn't even start on fire. Like still to this day, that's another like miracle because it was a hot summer day um, with the dry brush. Um, so as, as we're coming across the lake, and these are stories that we've heard since, you know, the crash, but the campers, they looked up and they could just see the plane, but they couldn't hear anything. And um, a couple of them said it looked as if angels were just carrying us down because it was like such like a... Sl looked slow to them, they yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, as we crashed, we were all knocked unconscious. And I remember coming to and 
my vision, it's like as if you had your hands here, like I couldn't see anything below me. And I was confused and I apparently was trying to reach over to get to Gentry and Jaslyn's like, can't you go out the door? You need to go out the door. And so I'm like, okay, you know, so I'm climbing out the door. Well, Shad's, uh, he's awake, but he can't feel his legs, so he can't move. And so I got out and then Jaslyn got out and then Brock and Boston got out. Brock had handed me his phone. He tried ki- calling 911. Yeah, it was, it was the phone that um, Dad was recording with, and it came back, and I went and I found it. I picked it up, dialed 911. It didn't, it didn't ring or do anything, so I'm like, oh, crap. We're so, stuck here. So then I got out and ran around to get to Gentry, and the, the plane doors had opened up, and Gentry was kind of like hanging upside down unconscious. And so the engine had come in on Gentry's side, and so his legs were trapped and visibly broken, and he was bleeding just about from everywhere, and um, so I just started screaming, and I could see people coming, and I'm just like, help, help, I don't know if he's alive, like, because he wasn't breathing, he wasn't responding to me, and all I could think was just to hold him, and um, because, like, and I'm just yelling, I'm like, breathe, Gentry, breathe, and then he started, like, gurgling, and I just didn't want him to, like, drown in his blood, like, I know that sounds so crazy, but I was just trying to, like, do anything I could to, to help him. And um, there was a guy that came up, and it was just like I couldn't even hold him. I'm like, you've got to hold him. I don't want him to stop breathing. And he yelped, and Brock was trying to rip the door. There was glass all over, and so he's taking his shirt off because he saw that Gentry was bleeding so much, and he's like... And the adults that had come over are trying to take the boys away. They didn't want them to see what was going on with Gentry. And so Brock takes his shirt off, and he's like, give this to Dad. He, Dad's going to need this, you know. So um, a few minutes later, it, it, this is all, like, everything felt like it was happening so fast. But a few minutes later, this guy came over, and he seemed to know everything that he was doing. And he's directing everybody and I'm like we've got to get him out and he's like no you can't take him out and um with injuries he, he could obviously see that he had broken bones everywhere and he, and I'm like but there's fuel and there was this fuel just running under gentry and when he saw that he started yelling for people to cover the fu- or cover the fuel with dirt and that's when they decided to try to pull gentry out and um there that's were another um I just think about that, and I think about in situations where you have this kind of this crazy accident. It's like, are you that person that's going to run over to help them? And I thought about that to myself, and I'm like, I hope I am that person that runs over and offers help. Because, like, looking back on the photos, I couldn't believe how many people were there. And there's a, a plane that could catch fire, and, you know, everybody that ran over could be harmed or hurt. or, But it was... Like, I think about that, and I think about how grateful I am, and I want to be those type of people, you know, if if I ever see a situation like that. But I'm I'm forever grateful for all the angels that were there, for sure. Yeah. So, um, Andy, he's the EMT that came over, and um, he's, Gentry had been wearing an Apple Watch, which is so random, but he's like, he's got an Apple Watch on, let's get his heart rate, let's, you know, so like all these random things that just felt like miracles to me. So we were able to watch his heart rate and Andy was able to keep taking notes for where he was at. And then um, this is like such a miracle too. There were three ambulances doing a training 15 minutes from where we crashed. So normally for the quickest ambulance to get there would have been an hour and a half and they were 15 minutes away and they'd been doing a training and they didn't know how to do an IV, but Gentry was losing so much blood that Life Flight had been called, but they didn't have, um, but he was losing blood. That, so if this ambulance wouldn't have been there, um, Andy was able to administer an IV to Gentry. And that was truly what saved him to even get to make it to the hospital. So um, there were three ambulances, and that was as many ambulances as we needed to take the three of us and Shad and Jaslyn. And then Gentry was life lighted. And our daughter, Alyssa, she knew that we were getting on the plane and she knew we were nervous. And she's like, oh my gosh, stop being so nervous because <laughs> we're just scaredy cats. And so 
I asked somebody from the accident, or, you know, from one of the campers to go call my daughter and let her know what happened. And Alyssa didn't answer her phone initially because she didn't recognize the number. And then they left a voicemail and Alyssa listened to the voicemail and it's like, your family's been in a plane crash. And Alyssa said that immediately she heard this voice say to her, your dad's going to be okay, which was so weird because she's like, well, what, what about the rest of my family? What's going on with the rest of my family? But she had that like immediate, like, I don't know, knowledge that Gentry would be okay. And she was like our rock, our rock. Yeah. Um, so she ended up calling back and she's like, what's going on? She thought that it was a joke because we're pranksters, but we would never prank <laughs> with something like that. But um, anyways, she, she's like, okay, I'm going to head to the hospital. So we told her where he was going to be life lighted. Well, um, I couldn't get service for like almost an hour. And so I'm like, Alyssa, he's going to go to the IMC hospital or U of U hospital. Go just start heading that direction. And um, she happened to check find friends, and this is where that dang Apple Watch came in handy again, because Gentry just, right as she turned on find friends, Gentry's watch had had landed at, um, what was the hospital you were at? Um, Provo Regional? Nope. Oh. <laughs> we were there for so long, I can't believe we can't remember. I can't even remember, yeah. I don't know. It's the one in Provo, but it's not. Utah Valley. Utah Valley. Utah Valley. Yeah, there you yep, go. That's that would be Utah it. Valley. <laughs> So anyways, it showed that that's where he was. And so she just immediately turned around and started heading towards that hospital. And she actually was able to get there right as he was landing. And the doctors let her in to see Gentry before he was going back to surgery and stuff. And so, and my mother-in-law, Gentry's mom, was able to go in there and see him before they did anything on him. So like just these like little things that kept happening. Um, and then while we were actually, you guys, I, I went forward too fast. <laughs> I've got to tell some other details. So um, while I'm helping Gentry, Brock and Boston, do you want to tell what you guys were doing? Go ahead, boss. Yeah, so um, I got out of the plane, and I just like remember looking up on the hill and seeing people run towards us. And I was just so scared, and I didn't know what to do. Um, and so I, was, I just decided to pray, and then... When people started coming over, I asked if um, they could help pray, and then I also asked if um, I, we could get a blessing by someone, and um, there was a guy that he came and gave us all blessings and stuff, so I just am super grateful for that. But. And and one thing that I think is so cool is it's like prayer is kind of universal, like every religion, and, and Boston had said there were people, they, they said prayers differently than we normally do, but it's so cool that everyone came together for that same same thing to, to just, just to help and give us comfort when we needed it. Yeah. So yeah. So um, before Gentry was life lighted, the guy came over to give Gentry a blessing, and he blessed Gentry with a full recovery, um, so that he could resume his role as father and husband. And um, you would think that that would give me peace, hearing somebody say he's going to be okay, and I was angry. Like, it's so dumb, but I was angry because I was like, why are you saying this? Why are you giving me this false hope? You can clearly see he's not going to make it. Why would you say that? And um, I learned later that you have to have faith. Um, so about a, a week after the accident, um, I met with one of the first people that showed up on the scene. His name was Josh. He was the one who helped me hold Gentry. And um, I just said, hey, do you remember who gave Gentry a blessing? And he's like, it was actually my dad. I'm like, really? I'm like, do you remember what he said? And he said, there are angels with you now and will continue to be with you as you make a full recovery. And I thought that was so cool because Gentry's had some times in the hospital where he felt um, comforted by people who were not there because it was during COVID and people couldn't come into the hospital. Um, uh, so then I, I'm going to go, I went to the hospital after I'd met with Josh and um, I met with the, they wouldn't let me in to go see Gentry. So I met with the chaplain and the chaplain's like, I met your daughter 
and she actually asked me to give your husband a blessing. I'm like, oh, she did. And he's like, yeah, and I, I really want to tell you what was said in that blessing. And um, he said, there are angels with you now and will continue to be with you to guide and direct the doctors as you make a full recovery. And I thought that was so crazy because it was such a similar blessing to the blessing he'd gotten at the scene of, of the accident. And um, do you want to tell your story, like, like you waking up? Yeah. Because it was a few days before. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't remember anything after the crash, but I remember waking up. This is my first memory, waking up, and I think it was three days later, laying. At that point, I didn't even know where I was laying. I didn't even know where I was at. Um, I just felt I was in the worst pain that I've ever been in in my life, and it was, I couldn't see because I had, um, things on my eyes. So it was just like this dark room and I was just scared. And, um, and I just remember thinking like, is this it? Like, and at that point, when you're, when you're at, at that point, all you have left is just to pray. Like that's literally all you have. And, and growing up, I've told this to people, but I'm, I wasn't much of a prayer. Like, I know everybody says, you know, you say your morning and night. Like, I never did that. I never, hardly ever prayed. I might we pray. We prayed at, at mealtime. <laughs> I, I always prayed at mealtime, yeah. <laughs> but it, it wasn't something that, like, I didn't really think about it. I mean, my life was good. I didn't really have any issues. So it was like, I didn't really think to pray. But in this moment, particularly, I knew I needed help. And I remember praying the most sincere prayer I have ever prayed in my entire life and just asking for comfort. And almost immediately, um, I, uh, I felt this flood of almost like it, it was just like warm in my heart. It just felt like people's prayers were coming into me. I know that sounds crazy saying it out loud, but that's just how I felt. And I remember how good I felt and how comforted I felt. Um, and then I felt somebody next to me. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if it was the doctor or the nurse or, like, I don't know who it was, but whoever it was, I was grateful that they were there because it gave me so much comfort. And um, as I was, as I was sitting or laying, I guess, um, my time at the hospital, I, I always remember that it felt like there were people around me. And nobody could come in because of COVID, but I remember telling Betsy, I, I said, it's crazy because they, have, they let all these people in and there's kids in here. And she kind of laughed at me. She's like, nobody's in there. And, but it felt comfortable. It, it, it comforted me knowing that like, you couldn't believe how well behaved the kids were. And I'm like, Gentry, there are no kids here. And it might have been, you know, the medicine I was on or whatever. But in my heart, I felt like it was angels. And whatever it was, I was grateful. And I'll be grateful to this day that those people surrounded me. Um, but that, that to me was, was the moment in my life. And, and I, as I reflect back on it, it's like I didn't really have a testimony of prayer. I wasn't the you know, the churchiest guy, but, you know, after 41 years, it's, it, it's embarrassing now that that's how long it took me to have a, a testimony of prayer, and now I pray a lot. I pray, <laughs> I pray a lot, and I'm sure he gets sick of me praying to him all the time, but, um, man, it's, if there's something that you can do for yourself or someone else, it's pray, because those prayers will be answered. I wasn't, I wasn't able to go in and see him because of the COVID restrictions. And um, I like begged and begged, literally went to the governor <laughs> to get in to see him because I'm like, he has to know that I didn't just leave him, that he, he's going to wake up and be so confused. But they let me go in. They gave me 15 minutes to go in and talk to him and tell him that we were in a plane crash, explain what happened. And then um, that was so good because then you were able to kind of like Oh, that was, that was a huge comfort for me, just because I didn't know where I was. Like, I didn't know where my family, I didn't know if my family was okay. I didn't, I didn't know anything. 
And for her to finally come in and talk to me um, was such a huge relief and blessing. Yeah. Um, so as time went on, um, I realized um, that the blessings he was given were not just words like I thought um, and I was upset with, but they were, they were words from God and they were meant to like comfort me. And, and I think too that Alyssa was given that moment with that voice telling her that her dad's okay because I depended on her so often and I would, I would get sometimes frustrated with her. I'm like, Alyssa, you didn't see him. You weren't there. You don't know. And she's like, mom, dad is going to be okay. Like calm down, you know? And so I'm just grateful that like we had people to, to count on to help our faith when mine obviously wasn't, wasn't there or where it needed to be. But, um, so Gentry was supposed to go in for surgery, um, for his back that Sunday morning. And the doctors weren't sure if he would be able to go in because he had bleeding and he had a, um, traumatic brain injury and they wanted to be sure he was stable enough for the surgery. And so, um, our ward had done a fast for him on Saturday. And when he went into the MRI, they discovered that all the bleeding was not only better, but completely gone. Um, and so he was able to have the surgery. So that was just like another thing to see. And it, it's so crazy because when you go through something terrible or traumatic or um, now looking back to, and, and even during that time, I just remember thinking, there are so many good people, like people who we haven't seen or talked to for years came and sent flowers or meals or sent a text or, and just cared. You know, like, um, I'll, I'll say this, and I try to tell people, I'm like, I know you're going through something terrible, but just pay attention to, like, how good people are and, like, look at the goodness. And because it, it was during a time, like, I felt like during COVID when there was so much polarization and politics and, and just in life and the way people believed. And during this, it was like, I just got to see the good in everybody. And that to me is like the biggest blessing. Cause I, I don't know, you, sometimes you lose hope in people and, and then being able to see how good people are. That was just, that was awesome for us. But, um, like I always, like I, like ha I kind of have a list of miracles that I just always look back on um, from that day just because the further away, the further it gets away, it's like you don't want to forget some of these like important things, but just the fact that we all survived this plane crash was, was a miracle. Um, the plane didn't catch on fire. Like I don't know how, to this day how that didn't happen with all the fuel and the dry brush. Um, the, camp, the campers who came to help, like literally if we crashed 40 seconds earlier, we wouldn't have had help. We would have been so far away from anyone to even get to us or in the water, they couldn't have gotten to us. Um, the camper who was an EMT, Andy, um, he was actually late checking out and it's crazy. We met with him a year later and he said that he was late checking out, but he just wanted one more view of the lake. And he went and he looked and he's like, he couldn't hear the plane, but he could see this just flying way too low. And he's like, this isn't good. And he looked over and he had like his, um, bandage set kit on his seat and he's like yells at his kids who happen to be EMTs in training and he's like get your stuff we're going over there and it was about a mile that he had to jog to get to us but um, the fact that he was there and then um, Josh's dad who came and gave them all blessings you know um, the the miracle that Shad had that voice to tell him to not land on the sand you know because we would have flipped and you know, possibly killed the boys. Um, and then the miracle that Alyssa had that confirmation that Gentry was going to be okay. And then um, this is another really cool one, but Gentry's neurosurgeon was supposed to be at a family reunion and he didn't go. And we didn't find this out for like months later. And he told us, he's like, yeah, I just, I, I decided not to go. And that's who took care of Gentry. Um, the other thing is, is and I joke about this, but that dang Apple Watch, like that really ended up being a miracle for us because we were able to watch his heart rate. We were able to track him so that Alyssa knew what hospital to go to. Um, 
so I just, I don't know. I think, too, when you go through something bad, it's, you, you have a better feeling or heart about things when you look at the miracles that come out of it. And so I think we can always focus on, like, oh, but this happened, and this happened, and this happened. But I think it's helped me and our recovery just to, like, really focus on the things that we felt like were miracles that happened for us. So one other thing is one of my very favorite singers, Ava, is going to give us a song. And you guys, this is just my favorite. So here she goes. Mm. Heavenly Father, are you listening? Like they say you do I swear I'm trying hard to trust you Ain't got much faith to lose It ain't you that I have doubts about There's just some ways about you I can figure out and I hope I don't make you mad But I don't know if I don't ask No disrespect at all You know I love you So I hope that it's okay If I got a thousand more a day Chalk it all up to a therapy session Thank you for your patience for all my questions I'd like to think you're sitting by me Just like two friends would And I would tell you there's a few things I wish I understood I guess the way you work in mysteries Is just your way to hold my curiosity and I hope I don't make you mad but I don't know if I don't ask no disrespect at all you know I love you so I hope that it's okay if I got a thousand more a day chalk it all up to a therapy session thank you for your patience for all my questions I know you hear it all the time, but I could use some peace of mind. No disrespect at all, you know I love you. So I hope that it's okay if I got a thousand more a day. I'll chalk it all up to a therapy session. Thank you for your patience for all my questions. You might recognize the melody. This is the song we got it from. I see my mother kneeling by her family each day. I hear the words she whispers as she bows her head to pray. Her plea to the Father quiets all my fears, and I am thankful love is spoken I hope you love that song as much as me. It's one of my very favorites. Um, and to, to wrap up with the bonfire, we always end with an invitation. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my son Brock on the spot. Yeah. So what would you say, like, out of all of this, like, what, what, what do you feel like happened as a family? Or, or I don't know. You tell me. Okay, so I think um, the crazy thing with, like, most people is when something bad happens, they'll, like, um, separate from their family or... 
They go through struggles. Yeah, they go through struggles. But with our family, it was, like, so different. Um, we got closer as a family. Like, I feel like just even, like, these past few years after the whole accident and everything, like, my mom's become, like, my best friend. Um, we did homeschool and stuff, too. And I feel like we just gained a really close relationship with them. So, like, those bad things, they can turn into good things, too. So, Love it. Yeah. Boston, what was your learning moment? Um, uh, feel free to just ask people to pray for you. I think that's, like, something um, that people are, but that most people are willing to do and that you can feel comforted by that. So ask for prayers and ask for blessings if you need them. Um, they can really help. And it's unifying, too, you know, when everyone's there for the same, same thing. Love mm-hmm. that. Thanks, boss. What do you have? What do you have for us? Well, every time I, I think about, you know, us going through the plane crash and and I, and I sometimes get in a situation where I'm like, man, I'm never going to be able to run again, or I'm not going to be able to walk normal. And, um, but with all that being said, at the end of everything, at the end of all of it, um, I wouldn't change what happened to our family because I feel like we grew so close. And, um, and I would just say to people out there, it's like, reach out to someone, reach out to your friends or your family or somebody that's in, that you just, you know, want to connect with because um, you just never know when it could be the last time. And, um, and don't do what I do. Don't wait 41 years to, to pray. Pray always and, and um, your life will be better for it, for sure. Thank you. Um, one quote that a friend gave me and I stuck it by my computer and I just looked at it every day and it said, when you focus on the good, the good gets better. And I just remember thinking like, anytime he had this like little improvement, like, oh yay, we can put weight on one of your legs or you don't have to wear your back brace anymore. Um, so I, I just kept focusing on those little things and it's, when you focus on the good, the good gets better. And that couldn't be more true. So if you're going through something hard, Focus on those little goods, because there always is, even little sometimes, but it does, it gets better the, the more you focus on that. Thank you for joining us and for listening to our story, and if you have any comments or thoughts or any time where you've had prayer really impact you or miracles or even if you've watched going through trials, your family grows closer together, um, I want to hear about it, and we'd love to to share in the comments here. So leave a comment for us and we will see you next week. I wish fireflies were angels cause they're easier to see They can guide you through life's forest Better than the faith that I have on my knees Even fireflies retire You can see them through the day And Lord, I'm really trying Need you to light the way Light my way home my guide can't do this alone so tonight send me faith and fireflies I could try and fight these trials But salvation's never cheap Every ocean needs a lighthouse You're the beacon shining down on me
My heart up to the sky. 